NASA are known for going into space. Ferrari, they're known for making beautiful, fast sports cars. Silka, they're known for making exquisite bicycle pumps, and they've been doing it for a long time as well. For over a century, um, they've been making bicycle pumps. Actually founded in 1917, just outside of Milan by the Sacchi family. So they've spent that century refining what they deliver on a product and they like to do things differently. They come from an era where things were made properly. They were made to last. But the beautiful thing is, is they added that Italian flair so it had to look good. And let's be honest, as cyclists, we all make most of our decisions based on how it looks and then we make sure the numbers work for us. So hey, no complaints from our end. So Silke really brought something special to the table and again, they continue to refine that over that 100 years. Now in 2013, they received a lovely accolade and they were basically the longest period of time for a bicycle brand owned by a single family, um, which is pretty rare these days as we know, brands change hand to hand all the time and there's nothing wrong with that, that's business. But the pluses to having your brand under the one family for over a century really means that you can build on the core values as a brand, as a family brand, and it means that they can really refine what they deliver to the market in a bicycle product. Um, so in 2013, the grandson of the Sachi family decided it was time to pass the baton of the Silka brand on, and they sold it to a chap called Joshua Portner, a US-based guy, someone who was uh, been in the cycle industry for a long time and Josh won't mind me saying a little bit of a geek. Um, he likes things done properly. He's, he's into engineering, he's into things being done in a precise manner. So he actually wasn't a stranger to the Silka brand. He actually bought his first Silka pump in 1990, became a fan of the brand straight away, loved how they'd done things, really appreciated what they'd built up over that time, over a hundred years as a family brand. So the chance to buy and take on the company was, was a great opportunity, so he jumped on it. In 2014, he took the whole operation over to Indianapolis in the US, where he continues actually to lead Silka as a brand. Um, and the kind of guy he is, he started to offer more under the Silka brand. So you start to see things like tools, saddlebags, lubrications, and many other things. So now it's not just a bicycle pump brand, but the one thing about Josh is that he's retained all of that DNA and that family ethos that the Sacchi family brought to the Silka brand and he's also kept in that Italian flair which is really important it's got to be good to look at so today what I'm hoping to do is to take you through what we call the Silka Super 7 and that's basically a collection of seven products that best represent the brand at this time um, and it does change and it evolves as, as uh, Josh brings new products or new product categories into the brand. But normally this is a really good rep representation of what the brand is all about. So whether you are a consumer looking for something to add to your bike as far as a storage solution, some tools for at home, or whether you're a retailer looking for a new brand to offer something premium and something pretty special to your consumer base. So today let's talk about the Silka Super 7. Okay, so the first product that I wanted to talk about from Silke is their tactical pump. Um, this is their on-bike offering. They actually do a whole range of pumps for on-bike, whether that's a, a traditional frame pump or if it's something that you want to carry uh, on the bike using a mount or if you're looking for something that's smaller that can, you can pop into the back of your jersey. So there's plenty of options. Um, for me, this was the one that I like. I like it to be attached to my bike um, and uh, the tactical for me is just it's a great size and it's really efficient at what it does. Now it's got an, an aluminium body that's gripped in the right areas to make sure that you can get all of the pressure that you need to when you're trying to get those tires up to those high PSI numbers. Um, it's a little bit different to normal actually and I'm just gonna pop mine off and this is actually my own bike and my own pump. Um, so it's actually upside down to your traditional pump. If I pull this apart, normally what you'll find is you're normally pumping from this end with a normal pump, 
but what's different about the tactical is you're actually pumping with the mass at this end. And what this actually allows is for us to get more pressure through uh, the valve. So it actually gives you about 10% more than your standard pump that goes from the other end. So it's a nice little touch. Now what's really important for a performance small pump, it's all about temperature management because essentially this is all about ensuring that you can keep things sealed and that the air is going where it's meant to go. So there's a few nice touches in this, so aluminium body, but it's got a steel shaft. This has got a twin air tube which is insulated in the middle to keep it cool to make sure that the performance is as it should be. It's actually also got a heat sink in here to manage the heat. Now that's pretty cool for a small pump. So the Super Pista Digital, I'm gonna talk you down through the features of this pump from top to bottom. And one thing I will say about this pump, actually pumps in general, I think people overlook them. What we've got to think about is tires touching the ground. I mean, that's really important, making sure you've got consistent pressure in there. You know what you're working with each time that you're riding your bike. I use this particular pump every single time before I go riding. Uh, and what makes it nice is that it's a pleasure to use and that makes all the difference. And when I go riding, I feel good, I feel confident that uh, my bike feels the same every time. So it's something not to be overlooked. So looking at the Super Piece, the digital, from the top down, the first place I'm gonna start with is the handle. Now it's a lathe turned ash handle uh, and it is beautiful. Um, tactile, feels good, it's grippy and it just has a nice premium feel to it with Silka is through and through. Over the top you'll see it's got this leather strap that pops off and this is basically just a carry strap. Um, and this just allows you to move the pump from place to place. So after the handle and the strap then we're starting to go into the body, into the guts of the pump and what makes it the pump that it is. Um, in the top it's actually got a steel shaft a part of an aluminium body so it's light it manages heat well but the steel shaft just means that you're going to get good longevity out of the pump itself the innards are actually all serviceable and replaceable and actually they use the same leather bladder inside this pump from the same source in Italy since the 60s and 70s which is very very cool so at least you know that if you do need to give this pump a bit of love down the line that you can so running down then we hit the uh, the digital display now it's set right up at the top of the pump rather than at the base where you would see with a lot of other pumps this is purely for ease of use so that when you are down at the wheel and normally in this pumping position you're right beside the digital display itself now the digital display works in a couple of different ways that it can help you. You can uh, look at the PSI that you're putting in there, which is actually accurate to 0 0.5, which is really important. So for mountain bikers or road riders alike, you can be really quite accurate with what you want to have in your tire. Um, it acts a little bit also like if you're going to the car pump where you put in your PSI and you carry on pumping until you hear the beep. So it'll give you an alarm to tell you that you've hit where you want it to be. So it's a really smart little tool. Batteries last for ages. Um, there's no issues there, even for someone like myself who pumps my tires or checks my pressure every single time before I leave the house. Now, as we run down the pump, obviously you've got a nice bit of Silka branding on this sort of um, almost oval, sharp oval shaped body. And this is all to make sure that we're getting the most out of the movement of the air, but also keeping it cool. Um, a bit like the other pumps, it's got a number of things in there to help manage the heat and make sure that performance is as it should be. All the way down into the base, you see this three-pronged claw approach on the base. This is all about keeping it steady. Uh, this is making sure that it's not something that's going to fall over super easy, something that can be placed somewhere and it's going to sit as it should. Now if we go on to the actual hose itself, now this is super, super nice. This is what actually caught me at the start. First of all, you'll notice that the um, to keep it nice and tidy for where it's sitting at home or in the car so that it's not flapping around the place, it actually runs down the back into this little hoop at the base. And as it comes back up into the chuck, it actually sits into this little magnetic port here. So it just keeps it nice and tight. And you can see there it slips into place and it doesn't move anywhere. Just another nice little touch. Now the magic in this pump is also in the chuck itself. This is what made me fall in love with Silka. It feels beautiful to use. It runs in a little bearing. And basically what, uh, what you need to do is, I may as well quickly show you while we're doing this, is when you're on your valve, this actually just 
pops onto your valve and then the lever just closes and you feel it click into place. So the feel of it, the, the use of it is actually really, really nice. You'll find yourself just sitting, opening and closing the chuck non-stop. It feels that nice. Um, and this just means that you're getting that same consistent feel each time that you use it, which is important for a performance track pump like this, especially when you've got mechanics at world tour level using them as well. So um, a lovely, lovely little touch. Now it is a press to chuck. Um, if you did want to use uh, the Schrader, which I actually had to do for my wife's car the other day, which is really quite nice and useful, is that you just pop off the, the press to chuck and then you're left with your shredder valve and you would use it as you would normal shredder valve. Uh, screw it on, pump as you normally would and replace it with your press to chuck afterwards. So it's super simple. So that is my choice for a track pump from Silke. There are others, but for me, it's all about the super piece, the digital. So as mentioned in the introduction to Silke, um, after doing pumps, they did move into other areas of parts, accessories, and now tools. Um, this has actually been in the lineup for a little while amongst some of the tools that they offer. And this is, as you can see, the T ratchet kit. Now basically it is a, um, comes in a nice pouch. So uh, all your bits and parts and accessories that come along with it are nicely kept all in the one place. And essentially it's a, multi-configurable, multi-functional ratchet and torque wrench uh, all in one. It's, it's quite a mouthful, but actually it packs a lot of punch in one little tool. Um, so basically um, it's all magnetic and can be put together in multi different configurations based on your use. And as you can see, it's got the wrench, as you would normally expect, with the multi-directional for tightening and loosening on the top. And it's also got your torque settings on there as well. So it becomes sort of very versatile when it comes to a tool, whether you have that in the car, in the van, or at home as a part of your toolkit. Um, it's also extremely well finished. So the actual uh, driver head is cold forged and it comes with a range of bits that you can use along with those as well. And it packs away super nice and it breaks down into three main parts of the body of the tool. Now if we look at the pouch itself, it um, comes in a waxed canvas with a uh, cross-stitched quilting in it. Again, just for that super nice feel, that premium end look and sort of tactile feel to, um, to the pouch itself. And the inside, it's something you would see in a, in, in a catwalk for a high-end handbag. It really is finished exquisitely. And that's the Italian flair that plays into this. So you've got the precision manufacturing out of the tool, but you've also got the look and finish to the product itself. As you can see inside, you've got all the bits there all the way up to a uh, six on the Allen key side. You've got a 10, 20 and 25 torques and you've also got the Phillips head finishing uh, for the screwdriver side as well. Um, wraps up nice into a small package and it's actually all little magnetic buttons as well. So it just feels really good to handle and everything fits into place nice and secure uh, and it just keeps everything in one place. So something that's really handy to carry around or just have at home when you need it for those quick fixes or quick adjustments for any bike whether it's mountain or whether it's road and when you want to make sure that it's nice and precise especially with the um, with the wrench and the ratchet um, perhaps this is the one for you this is the Securo bottle cage from Silke and it's a titanium bottle cage and as we know um, this type of of cage and the look of this cage is becoming more and more popular, especially as we see things like gravel getting bigger, multi-surface uh, riding getting more of a thing for everyone, I think it's fair to say. So yeah, the look and functionality of this cage actually does play a part. Um, now, as I mentioned, it's titanium, it's aerospace grade, titanium and it's actually used uh, with a very specialist piece of equipment, a laser welder in-house at Silka to give it that nice finish. It's secured to this back plate on the back which gives you 21 mil of adjustability on the frame so you can get that fine fit or maybe if you're squeezing in that second bottle and it's a bit tighter so you've got a bit of something to play with. Um, also how it's designed, the material it's made it does make it the uh, perfect type of cage to use for that sort of gravel bike or that really harsh terrain or harsh surface so 
UK roads makes it uh, a perfect option so, uh, for that type of bike. It's only 29 grand, so it's extremely, extremely light. And it plays into the ethos from Silka of that uh, beauty, strength, durability, and sort of precision design. So if you're looking for a lightweight titanium bottle cage, the Securo. Silka Super Secret Chain Loop is <laughs> quite a mouthful. Um, but it's certainly worth an explanation. Now, Josh Portner at Silke is no stranger when it comes to working with uh, lubrication, but top end, top performing lubrications. He's actually been recommending and helping and, and uh, supporting top level world tour riders and triathletes with uh, hot uh, wax melt treatments for their chains just to really go for that frictionless performance um, also helps really to keep the bike nice and quiet um, and it's you know it's those little things it's those um, the little things that make a big difference that Josh understands and with his experience and working with us he kind of felt like this was something that really suited the the lineup of products from Silka so um, it is as close to the hot wax melt as you could get um, you get you know, the benefits without all of the hassle, which is really, really great. And again, who is it for? Well, again, it's people who are looking for that frictionless performance um, for those who like a quiet bike. Um, and, you know, I think that we all, in one way or another, fit into either one of those categories, which is really good. Now, when using this, it's really important that you have a really clean chain um, to get the most out of this, to take away any possibilities of friction in and amongst those links. There's got to be a real nice clean chain. And this actually comes in uh, two different variations. It actually comes in uh, what you see in front of me in a tub, which is a 16 ounce tub with 12 ounces of the actual um, chain lube inside. So it gives you enough space to actually add your chain to this tub as if it was a, a hot melt wax um, treatment. Now there also does come in the standard bottles you would expect from any lubrication and it comes in a, um, a four and six ounce bottle with a precision applicator as you would expect. Um, now they do recommend regardless of either options that you do use, again it's a really clean chain to get the most out of it. And also it's important the time between you apply it to when you use it, so you should really be giving yourself 12 to 24 hours really to get the most out of this loop. Um, so it's something definitely if you're after something quiet or you're after top end performance, this could be what you're after. Now for the actual dipping of the chain using this lube, we will actually link to another video to help you understand and Josh himself will talk you through that. So if you are interested and you wanna go for the dip, link to the video. If you are just looking for the normal everyday applicator, which will you know give you the same performance, just a bit easier to use, then that is the option for you. The Silka Super Secret Chain Lip. Now when it comes to saddlebags from Silka, they've got a couple of options. Uh, and again, coming from an Italian heritage that I talked about previously, the Italians do bags very well. We know that bags are a utilitarian piece used in all different industries for all different types of things, but the Italians seem to do them well in all of those versions. So looking at the bicycle side of a saddlebag, there are normally two categories that you'll play in. Um, there's normally that capsule um, style where it's a set capacity and you obviously get it in, in different sizes and slight variations in shape but essentially it's that one size and it stays in that form and you use the capacity as you need it to and you put as much or as little in there and pad it out as needed. The other style then is what you would call the wrap um, or the roll. Uh, and basically, this is one where you can play a little bit with the mass of the actual product itself. So you can put the maximum capacity in there to make use of it, or you can put little in there if you're just out for a quick, fast spin, but you want to bring all your essentials with you. So it means that it can be the minimum or maximum size, so giving you that little bit of variation. But they both play their part, and we all have our own uses, and you may suit one or the other, or sometimes, like myself, you might use both, depending on the type of ride or bike that you're using. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is the Matone. Now this is the, this is the first variation that I talked about, and this is more like that capsule set capacity 
saddlebag. And Matone actually is uh, Italian for brick, so <laughs> quite a suitable name. So you imagine hollowing out a brick, making it look nice, adding some nice materials, putting some closure systems to attach it to your bike and giving it some Italian flair and this is what you've got in front of you. So it's a particularly lovely piece. So breaking it down, first of all, it's nice and neat and tidy. The size is great. It's not too big and it's not too small. It will sit nice and high up underneath your saddle. So it's pretty um, inconspicuous as far as capsule styled saddle bags go. It uses a BOA closure system as well. So it keeps it nice and neat and tidy. And depending on how much you've got in there and um, you can sort of incrementally give as much pressure on there as you like and uh, Silka tell us that this closure system is actually 15 times more uh, pressure that you can put to it than you can with a velcro strap so it gives you that bit of security that once it's in place it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to flap and move and it's going to keep all of its contents nice and safe now, when you open it up, um, you see that they've got this AquaGuard um, YKK zipper. So this, again, is just going to help to keep all the road nasties out, stop all the ingress and keep the contents nice and safe, especially if you're carrying any notes or anything else that you might not want to get wet. Um, when you actually open the bag up, it's got an off-center zip and there's a reason for this. And they've made this in a style of a book so that when you do open it up, it's not sort of closing back up on itself and it's tough to access the contents inside. So when you open it up, it'll sit flat, it'll stay open and you can get what you need, especially in those times maybe when you're out in the wet and cold and you're looking for a quick fix. Um, if it may happen. It's got that signature red detailing on the inside as well that just signifies a bit of quality and that premium Italian flair that you would expect with Silka. Um, and as you can see in here, it's got this, uh, again, a bit like a book, it's got a page in there, which is basically what they call a ballistic nylon padded page. And this helps to separate the contents, whether you want to keep your house keys away from perhaps something that you don't want to get scratched up, or if you've got a CO2 canister in there or anything else. So it really just gives you a few different ways of separating those important bits that you're going to keep in the bag if you want to keep those safe. But it's a real nice, um, real nice bag. It's 0.6 liter capacity. So um, it's plenty of space to carry all the bits and bobs you need. It looks good, it feels good, it sits nice in the bike and uh, yeah if it's a capsule style saddle bag you're after the Matone. So moving into Silka's seat roll or seat wrap um, saddle bag option the Asymmetrico. Now they had another saddle bag in the range called the seat roll premio which they had out for years and actually it's done very very well for them um, it's got a really good name for itself so they they took that as a baseline to improve on it and bring out the asymmetrical so this is it's a bit lighter um, it's reduced in bulk and it's got increased uh, abrasion protection as well um, so as we talked about before it's got a Boa closure system and this essentially just allows you to change the volume and the mass of the actual piece itself so it folds out into something that's nice and easy to access it's got three main pockets on the inside which will fit all of the stuff that you need to have in there it's got that signature red detailing that i mentioned a lot coming from that italian flair that's been built over that hundred year of heritage that the brand have got um, also, it's got some nice reflective detailing as well, so that when you are out in those low light situations that you're going to be seen. Um, and it's just a general all round nice piece of equipment. It comes in at around the 85 grand mark, so certainly not heavy. And you can fit up to a 700 by 45 C tire in here, along with your other little bits and bobs. So certainly plays to what is required from a saddle bag uh, with the uh, recent sort of uh, boom in off-road and gravel S bikes. So no holdbacks, Italian style, lots of versatility, bow closure system, lighter, less bulk. It's the asymmetrical from Silka.